The Sports Fan Network. The Sporting Lockdown with Dan McLeod and Eddie Rusker. Uh, another week, welcome to the Sporting Lockdown, Dan here, Ritzkov, what is up man? Hey, what's up man, nothing, I'm all good, how you doing? Good, how's that ankle from that pole dancing accident you just uh, went through? Honestly, it was fucking sore. It was? I was in a lot of pain, but I'm good, I'm happy now. Do you think that it would inhibit your ability to watch sports though? Ooh, ooh depends, depends. Because it depends you, how painful it is. Did you watch any sports this weekend? I actually did. I watched wow. a bit of wrestling. That I considered it a sport. <laughs> I, and I, hey, 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 hey! I watched some fucking cricket too. Wow. Yeah, I, I saw um, what's his name, McCullum. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was pretty ruthless. He, he, hit was. he hit some sixes. He, I think he hit the car too, didn't he? Uh, he oh had my a car. God. He yeah, had a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a car. We're also joined in by the ultimate writer. How's it going? JB, how are you, man? Good, thank you very much. And yourself, Dan? I've been good. I've been going good, man. How's, nice. Tell us about your week. What has your week been consisting of? Uh, I've actually been quite sick this week, so I've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes for the podcast, but not a lot else. All right. Oh, wow. Man. For those of you who don't know, JB does most of our producing and stuff. He's a, he's, a, he's a wealth of knowledge, actually. He knows he's a smart guy. guy. He knows more than he looks like he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Down for sure. course, he does not look like a JB. That's, that's, that's no, sure. that's right. Or Jean, uh, Jean, Jean Baptiste. Baptiste. <laughs> oui, oui. You definitely actually don't look like a John Barry. No. Like, if I'm yeah. quite honest, you look like a Mosse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Watermoo. <laughs> it's wow. Watermoo, thank you very much. Or a drug dealer. Yeah, or a drug dealer. <laughs> and of course, not a drug dealer is white guy Nathan. How's it, man? Hey, good. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're our version of McLovin. Do you realize I, I that? I really feel like I have to plan to the white guy thing now. You're like McLovin, the gay version. You don't yeah. need to plan to the white guy thing because you are the whitest person I've ever met in my entire life. And that is actual truth. That is for real. That is for real. Hey, big week in the sporting uh, controversy world. All right. A lot of things happen. We'll leave the Manny and the Floyd Mayweather stuff to sprawl and brawl a little bit Team later on. Team money, bitches. Team money, but Hey, my money's on him as well, but we'll talk more about that later. America's Cup. UFC, the drug scandal's still continuing on in regards to sort of the, the statements and, and the position of the UFC. But also, Carmichael Hunt. A more few, drugs. Yeah. Oh. And, this is, and this is a major one. In fact, I saw a headline, I think it might have been the Sunday Morning Herald, the darkest day in Australian sports. Um, and for those of you that don't know what happened, of course, uh, during the week it was revealed that Carmichael Hunter had been arrested for supplying uh, um, a um, Class A drug, yep. cocaine, okay, yeah, yeah. particularly. Um, and, and I guess a lot of this, the thought along that was that it was just going to stay at that. But in the last couple of days, shit has really gone crazy. Um, there, there is a um, yeah. if you if you get the opportunity to follow on Twitter, the mole, the mole sort of broke um, a few other uh, stories that a number of top NRL rugby players, rugby league players, particularly those aligned to the Gold Coast Titans, had also been um, under surveillance. Because what had happened here was Carmichael Hunt had been under surveillance for a couple of years, and through that. They had picked up a whole lot of stuff, and what players would do when they when they'd come into Queensland or whatever, they would ring him or text him and be like, he would organise the drug drop and all yeah. that sort of stuff for the players. Crazy, yeah, crazy. And it is pretty crazy that it, that a player at that sort of level would want to um, make more it? money. Well, no, no, yeah, <laughs> not just make more money, but risk his entire career risk yeah. making money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I mean, I mean but you had like Michael Vick. He had the same thing. Yeah. He was making a lot of money. Then he risked, he, he wasted it all on you know, the, uh, the dog, dog fighting. fighting. You know, the thing yeah. about Michael Vick, Michael Vick just comes across me like he's fucking dumb though. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, he comes across like he's quite possibly the dumbest quarterback I think you've probably ever seen. <laughs> and But when you look at Carmichael Hunt, Carmichael Hunt seems like a quite a, um, uh, a switched on guy. Yeah, yeah. He, is, he, he speaks very eloquently. Yeah. He's very articulate. Um, and he's a, he's a, he's, he really is a top star. He's a, and he's been a top star that's been able to play three different codes of football. Football in Australia, yeah. rugby yeah. union, rugby league, and of course um, Aussie rules. And at the moment, he is signed for the Queensland Reds, and he didn't play this weekend. And I think it was the right decision for him not to play. Yeah. But this is a guy that is at the height of his physical capabilities when it comes peaking. to yeah, he's peaking, you know. And he does something stupid. Yep, he's like definitely this. peaking. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> no, there is the yeah, no, 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 that one. Very very good. But. The Gold Coast Titan thing is, is an interesting one just to quickly look at because the Gold Coast Titans have been in a lot of trouble financially over the last couple of years. They lost their major sponsor this year. Now, um, they've got a new incoming CEO which has been trying to sort out um, a new sponsorship and new players. And in fact, Daly Cherry Evans, the, the halfback for the Manly Seagulls, yeah. was in Gold Coast this um, past three days 
discussing with the CEO about taking up a contract next season with the Titans and I can't see him wanting to have a, a single part of the Titans no. now after this because he's, no. he's missed a good wholesome clean cut um, NRL player yeah. Yeah. and so I can't see that happening but they're saying now two names have been released um, who have it sounds like been implicated in this and those two names are do you, have you got those there for me? Uh, Jamie Dowling and Bo Fallon but Falloon Falloon I yeah. think yeah and of course, moving through that, some of the other further speculation has been upset the fans. Uh, most of all, the, the speculation here is the damage it's going to do to the Gold Coast Titans, whose, whose future has been, um, you know, under the microscope anyway. They've, they've been a struggling club. Uh, I can tell you, they they still owe money to a lot of people all up and down the Gold Coast. Uh, they uh, really have problems attracting fans, so it's going to be a massive problem and of course uh, they're in the hunt for daily Cherry Evans where they can kiss him goodbye and they don't have a major sponsor. I can't see people brushing in uh, at the moment so real problems for the Titans. Yeah no doubt about that. I mean daily Cherry Evans as you well know flew up last week to meet with Titans management with Graham Annesley the incoming CEO. I mean there, as you say there ain't no way Daly's going anywhere near that club now. No that's right and it's a real blow because he would have been a marquee player he would have absolutely put them on the map. He would have drawn fans, and he would have won games. And, and this is a sort of damage um, scandals like this do. It, it, it's a real pity. So looking at that and what's been happening yeah. over in Australia and what's coming up, there's major concern for the Gold Coast Titans. Yeah. Um, there's been other bids to put another NRL team out of Brisbane. Mm. And so they're, they're talking that the possibility is is that they could get rid of the Gold Coast Titans wow. and bring in another team out of Brisbane. So New huge, franchise. Yeah, and huge, so huge implications. It's amazing the impact that drugs can have on not just individual players but also the entire setup the of the entire of sport or an yeah. entire franchise a whole team because you, you think about it rugby league is the glamour sport in Australia that's right cricket is the national game yeah. but rugby league is the glamour sport when it comes to yeah. um, you know the big the show, names well the big names big pro yeah. sports well, and what would exactly. AFL be then uh, AFL's really only m- super massive in uh, Victoria, yeah. although it, it has a growing base in, in New South Wales. Yeah. So, huge thing to me out there. I mean, I think Carmichael Hunt has just done, he's done himself a disservice. A lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely, because he is a good player, and this just seems like a, a, a stupid schoolboy era made by, by, yeah. by a young guy, a mature guy. And at a bad time as well. From, from what I heard on that little segment there is... The team's in trouble already, and this is just like another nail on the coffin. It's just like so awful actively timing. prohibiting the team from being able to get better. They can't retool yeah, when, yeah. when they've got something like this happening. Yeah, who wants to go play for a team that might not be there next year? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. It's pretty rough. Who wants to go play for a team that's high on cocaine? Not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the, I'll be failing all the drug tests. Hey, do, they, do they actually do a drug test? Like, um, do they actually do random drug tests in the? I'd know, imagine that, they would, yeah. That's, what, um, that's when all this started, I think, is when they introduced out-of-competition testing, yeah. much the same as uh, the, the UFC. Mix, yeah, UFC Mixed Martial Arts. You know, that, that, um, you actually start catching guys when you do it on a random, a more random basis, yeah. at least. All right, there. So that was what's been happening out of Australia when it comes to the NRL. Of course, another big, big week in regards to, for obviously, the NBA and the National Basketball Association. Huge. Forgetting the trades and the trade deadlines and what happened with those, yeah. let's have a look at sort of all-star weekend your highlights of all-star weekend jb uh my highlights of all-star weekend uh one of my picks patrick beverly taking the skills challenge i thought he would um this new skills challenge format is amazing so um, was. even though we sort of gave nate a bit of a hard time when he said the skills challenge was his jam i'm sort of coming around there but um man you can't put it past uh zach levine in the dunk comp yeah it was incredible I, I was kind of the only thing I didn't like about the skills challenge was yeah. it was quite short like the rounds were kind yeah. of like 30 seconds that's right which I was hoping they could add another little section in there just to yeah. maybe lengthen it out a bit but more cardio but, uh, that three pointer as I was saying last week was that what, that's what won Beverly it because yeah, he was right. way behind and then he and then hit his first three it. And yeah, Zach Levine was just like, he was trending on Twitter. Yep, Everyone huge. was talking about this guy who and no one had heard of really before. He said beforehand. he still has more dunks, like he, more impressive dunks. He said dunks. they were his safe dunks because he wanted yeah. to go out and make sure he got them down. And he had Jordan on his back. It was awesome, man. Yeah. It, w- it was very impressive. Like He did the Space Jam? Is that yeah. what he did? Space, <laughs> yeah, the old Space Jam <laughs> yeah. jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, the amount of ease in which he did all the dunks with. Like he was doing uh, a behind uh, the back alley. I think the best way to win the dunk comp is do what Sting did. Remember, you know how Sting comes down from the rafters? Yeah. I think that's what the next dunk has to do. Did we just come down from the rafters? Did we just chuck WWE? Did you manage to fit WWE into All-Star Weekend? 
Yes. Did you catch any of the All Star Weekend? Uh, mm, uh, yeah, I actually watched a little bit from the corner of my eye while I was watching <laughs> the UFC. Nice. Um, but the, the, actually, the guy, who, yeah, the guy who took out the dunk comp looked pretty cool. It was. Uh, it was flying, yeah. bro. But you, you know, to be honest, uh, it wasn't really that like. Oh ne- shit! Next to him, like, it was very sort of like he saved very the average. Yeah. For sure. Oladipo had like one cool dunk. Yep. And it was yep. like they just. Kind of the other two dunkers just did really play. Mason plain, Plumley, so, yeah. it's like, dude, it's almost, it's almost like the next time the next guy is going to do a dunk is going to have like Little Wayne come out perform for him, <laughs> and Katy Perry come out, and then going to be the uh, Justin Bieber by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, so so Nate the White Guy, your highlight of All Star Weekend. Um, besides Levine, I'd <laughs> have to stats. say Steph Curry <laughs> catching fire was incredible. I think he had yeah. 15 in a row. I think it was. And total and of 25 points. Yeah, missed his last shot, which was like, yeah. would have been huge if Clay he made Thompson that. Clay Thompson choked it up. And so I think he set or tied the all-time record for most points in a round. But obviously they've got that money ball rack, money so rack, it's kind yeah. of a bit, bit dodgy. And that segues me into introducing our guest podcaster today, Mr. Matt G. Matt Groves. Welcome yeah, into yeah. the... Uh, Welcome into the family. Sure boy Welcome in the, the house. Family. What's up? What's up, team? What's up, Would Fat Cat? What's nice up? To join you guys. Matt's known as Matt the Stat. For those of you that don't know <laughs> oh, him, um, <laughs> I believe that that that's a self-appointed <laughs> nickname, actually. Um, Matt, you're you're a massive NBA uh, fan. You're a massive basketball follower. Absolutely. What was what was the highlight? In fact, you actually came down here to the tap room and watched the uh, the All Star game. What was your, what was your highlight of All Star Weekend? Okay, so uh, looking back on All Star Weekend, you know, a lot of people obviously talking Zach Levine and uh, huge, you know, that guy huge is the right word. Like his 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 skill set is is absolutely awesome. But uh, the reason why it was not a highlight for me, yeah, would be um, <clears throat> just pretty much the rehearsal of uh, previous Vince Carter sort of dunks. Sure, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and you know, like that's that's cool, <coughs> but. Um, you take a look at Oladipo, who who came out, Duncan Lipo, did the 540. <laughs> I, I might be slightly biased here, being an Orlando Magic fan, yeah. and we don't really get much to uh, cheer about. That's right. But uh, <laughs> I thought that 540 was pretty impressive. Had he hit uh, that second one he was on, it would have been yeah. a good... But uh, I think I think skill set-wise, Levine was sort of ahead of him, uh, well and truly. His hops just, are just... Yeah, his hops are amazing, man. That guy just flies, eh? So something a little bit more original next time, yep. And, yeah. And... Uh, David like, Copperfield. Is, is there anything that's left, what you need? Like, you know, there, there's 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 some originality left. I think yeah. you know, like um, uh, bring like a pool of crocodiles out yeah, or something. Yeah, something cool like that. <laughs> Snake pit. Bring bear girls. Yeah, man. Take it to I'm the jungle. About. While he's pissing, you've got to like jump over him and dunk. The Actually, scary, the do a hologram with, with Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's wow. true. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you insinuating that Michael Jordan's gonna die? Yep. Because you don't <laughs> need a Michael Jordan <laughs> hologram. <laughs> Why not just get the man himself? Uh, he's still got it. Yeah, I don't think he's still got he, it. Can he still dunk now? Yeah. He can still dunk. I, I, do. I wouldn't yeah. put it past him at all. all. Right. There's there's video of him um, as as recently as a month ago dunking at um at uh, Hornets at Hornets HQ. Damn. And and, and sh- you know and, and having a shoot around with a couple of players and yeah. like like one current, on one with Stevenson. current NBA players and like taking them to school one on one. It's crazy. So. Mm. Um, looking at All Star Weekend and, and everything that happened, um, the new format discussion needs yeah. to be brought up here, JB, and I believe it's something that's close to your heart. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, I, I I like the the sorry the format for the um, skills challenge. Thought it was good. The head to head definitely made it more of a watch. Um, I I don't know if they need more rounds though, or if you know, like, like Nate said earlier, whether they need. Um, you know more just more to it because it, you know by the time you actually get into it it was already over all right what, what about nate what do you reckon about that what about changing it up a bit i just reckon if they can somehow work it out where the course is the same as it was in previous years but it's somehow head to head i don't know if it'd be possible to do it whether you get one guy start at one end one at another or something because the old course was very one way it was like you yeah, went yeah. around in a circuit yeah um but i just feel like whether there's another if there's another pass or another shot or something in the middle of that course just to add another 10 seconds to it because it was a 30 second competition where if you made a mistake you had to hit that three to have any chance you yep. couldn't catch up on any other skill so it was kind of reminded very, me of very knockout quick. when you know when they both get to the three point line at the end just yeah like yeah it was reminded yeah. me so much of knockout yeah you got a view on that uh, Matt yeah man uh, look skills challenge like uh, Nate was saying there boring 
Yeah, it was a bit boring. <laughs> like, let's, let's be honest. Like these guys have got an incredible talent. Yeah, and it's not getting showcased properly. I'd, I'd like to see sort of like a minute round type thing. Yeah, and just like um, dunks and just, everything. Yeah, just a bit of a bit of everything thrown yeah. into there, you know? Because there is there is those amazing skill sets that aren't getting utilised. Um, but you, on that, do you, do you think we've already got too much dunking there? You got you got a whole competition focused purely just on 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 yeah. dramatic artistic dunking. Okay, so how about at the end of the skills challenge, just a lob up with a uh, finish off with an alley oop? Yeah, yeah, right. alley, alley oop to self, self yeah. even something like that, or a self alley oop. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. Um, you know, speaking of speaking of which, how good was Penny Hardaway's half court shot? <laughs> <laughs> Still but got it. What was even better was uh, I must admit I'm not a big fan, Chris Chris Bosch. Uh, he, he stepped up and hit that half quarter. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was a big... Uh, also, uh, big news out of the NBA. Chris Bosch out for the rest of the season. Yeah, and possibly career-ending as well. Yeah, yeah, well possibly yeah, life-ending, so. you know, if, uh, if it doesn't go right. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, you always over-dramatize things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not being dramatic, it's being real. Stating the possibilities, man. All-star yeah. all -star game. Lower ratings this year than the 40-year anniversary of Saturday Night Live. Ooh. Yeah. Is the all-star game effectively non-relevant now? Like the game itself on Saturday, I mean Sunday, uh, yeah. US. Yeah, uh, you know, I, you, I really only watch it to see if anyone's going to go one one on ones or you know if anyone's going to catch fire. So Kobe had a really good interview actually <clears throat> in his NBA TV um, discussion that they had and yeah. their little focus on him late last week, where he discussed about the uh, the All Star Game in some respect and how um, you know every time he goes on the court, he doesn't take it as a joke. It's competition, yeah, yeah. regardless. It's yeah. not. It's not just a fourth quarter game for him, you yeah. know. So, what is it going to take? Because I think what we're lacking in All Star um, uh, basketball, and I've always looked at the All Star game being a little bit more legitimate than, say, Pro Bowl, because yeah. of the Pro yeah, Bowl yeah. game, you know, with the, the change of the change of some rules, yeah, contact and rules, and things like that. But in All an All Star weekend, the game's exactly the same. The rules are the same. Yeah. But no one plays in a def any defense. It could what, what, be amazing. What, is, what that's well, that's the point of it. You, yeah. You have these players, and it's supposed to be an amazing game. Now, take a look at the yeah. NRL All Star game versus the indigenous team mm. that was pretty that was Huge. That, that's like that's massive you know yeah. for these guys absolutely and what is it going to take to change that with the NBA All-Star game you know what's going to I'll, I'll tell you what's going to change that is uh, nothing because these players are getting, <laughs> they, they, they're getting paid so much it's because they call it All-Star break I think it, you yeah, know, it sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. It's, it's sets like, the scene it is the chiller and, and it, the fact that uh, these guys are getting paid so much to turn up and do this and um, uh, getting paid throughout the season that yeah. the risk of uh, injury, injury, injury playing, playing through, you know yeah. and that, that is the real issue there I think um, and these guys are just not going to are not going to go and waste themselves for, for the sake of a bit of a but a, there's, a, there's a greater uh, implication to this than just them and their bodies in, in regards to the game the implication is is that All Star Weekend effectively will lose revenue whether it be through sponsorship and tele yeah, yeah. television viewers TV, dropping off yeah. TV and that's what pays these guys to be there for All Star Weekend yeah. All Star Weekend's not just about going out there and having a bit of a festival yeah. for these guys it's also about an extra um, an extra payday for them yeah, yeah. well you're, you're dead right because I mean I, I look back at um, watching this year's All Star game and sadly I was just bored very, you know, uh, yeah. And like, uh, you know, uh, there's a few cool dunks and stuff. And, and even though I'm not a LeBron fan, he pulled out some sick moves, man. Oh, like, yeah. You know, as he would, because he's just uh, an amazing player. But uh, I was just bored. And it's got me questioning whether I'd watch next year's one. I've and always had my, my idea for a solution. And it's one that uh, Major League Baseball uses, which has been really effective. Testosterone? You make, yeah, <laughs> you make <laughs> yeah, the All-Star game true. mean something. And in baseball, they do it. So the team that wins, that... Um, division like for in basketball it's at, uh, Eastern Conference Western yeah, Conference yep. that conference gets home field advantage in the finals oh, so right. even though oh, okay. it kind of you could see it as slightly unfair where that's, it, it stops making the regular season matter a little bit yeah it does add incentive. The players go out. They don't play hard, hard. But they play. But they like go out and they play, and they, they're trying to win. Yeah. They're not going to hurt each other. They're not going to do anything like stupid. celebrating being millionaires. Yeah, and, they're, you they're know. not going to go out and do hard fouls or anything. But it would add reason to go out and try win. Yeah, you know, right. no, actually, you know what they need to do now. You know that program Wipeout. Yes. That's the oh, shit that dude. they need to yeah. add in, I love in the skill set. <laughs> Imagine that shit. Big red balls. <laughs> yeah, you got to dodge. <laughs> wow, what? <laughs> but um, yeah, does it add in like actual real entertainment for people to, that aren't really fans of? Like so, to be honest, I've never watched a single uh, All Star Weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to me, it, it is boring. Yeah. The but thing if, is if if there was like cool shit that was happening on, in front of the TV then yeah there is a lot of cool stuff it's just all star game itself is, is losing the, its the relevance the game itself yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you what I found more interesting was the celebrity game oh yeah, yeah. Kevin Hart man that yeah. guy 
<laughs> that guy. But you see him get chewed up by that little 13-year-old chick. Yeah, yeah, that's that right. That was awesome. That was cool. If you, want, if you want to see an example of how they can, or not how, but what the All-Star game should be like, have a look at just the Rising Stars game. Yeah. You know, cause, yep. Because that's an example that of good, hard, but clean basketball. Yeah. Maybe not quite so much of Stephen Adams yeah. being playing, but, but that was an example of good, hard basketball. Yeah. Like um, a hard scrim. Pr- it, was, it was nice. Pretty much. Yeah. Because it's not even it's not even scrimmage when they're playing the All-Star yeah. game. Yeah. You know, you drive. they're driving into the lanes and everyone's stepping out of the way so yeah. they, don't, they don't want to take a charge. Yeah. Um, although I'll never, I'll never forget the, uh, the last All-Star game Kobe played in and he literally just went after LeBron for like the yeah, last man. two quarters and things yeah. like that, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, and maybe the All-Star weekend can be an opportunity for players to... to, to Sort of settle settle. Up a few rivalries and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, because these guys. Let's be honest here: professional sportsmen are egotistical. They You've got to be. They exactly. They're egotistical. They want to be the best. Yeah. And this is an opportunity on a platform which should be the largest platform. Prove yeah. that you're the best. Have a look at when Dallas hosted the um, uh, All Star Weekend, and they played at Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. You know, mm. and things. I mean, the biggest stage, the biggest crowd I think they'd ever had for a for a professional basketball game in the United States. And it was it was embarrassing to watch. Yeah. Anyway, so does anyone else have anything else you want to touch on with All Star Weekend? Because yeah, good. now the review was good. Because moving through with NBA stuff as the Thunder lead the Hornets seventy seven seventy two. Yeah. It is the trades, the big movers, the bad moves, the good moves, the stink moves. Oh. And JB, for those of you you can't see this, but we're going to put it on our Facebook page, and it'll be on hopefully the Ultimate Rider page, oh. maybe by by chance if he, if he finds the the relevance there. <laughs> is this incredible diagram of who went where, who did what? <laughs> and which not, what, what, this, that. Break it down, JB. Uh, yeah, that, that diagram is not going to help anyone. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's it's sort incredibly of to, to illustrate uh, how difficult that it is. That shit looks so fucking confusing. <laughs> it's, it's not that confusing. Like, me and Nate have been having a look through it, and Nate's got a couple of hot takes that, um, that, that he's that got. That, to me, looks like a snakes and ladder version of NBA. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of point guard movement. Like, every yeah. kind of young up-and-coming point guard pretty much got moved. you got Brandon yeah. Knight, Michael Carter-Williams, Isaiah Thomas, Reggie Jackson, DJ Augustine. Yeah. It's like, a bunch of really talented guys. Dragic. Uh, yeah, Dragic. Dragic and like, his brother, yeah. And it's kind of, we've talked about all season how great the NBA point guards are. Just and quickly, half of them moved. the big buy for, the, the big trade for me for the weekend was, was Pat Riley picking up Dra- Dragic out of the Suns. Yep. And bear in mind that Dragic pa- basically painted the Suns into a corner where they had to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he did everything he possibly could so they got rid of him. Yeah. But and and Dragic's three teams that he he basically what he did was his agent shut it down to only three franchises he wanted to go to. It was either the Heat, it was either the Lakers, and I forget who the other team was. But A he didn't have himself for so many options, but I think this is a really, really good pickup for Pat Riley and, and, and the Miami Heat organization. Yeah, well, I think we were saying contenders again. I think we were saying maybe two weeks ago how much the Heat needed a point guard. Yes. Now yep. the Heat got. A point, I mean, they've lost Bosch, which is huge, but yep. they've got a good point guard, which means like a, they've got a great a point Dragic guard. Dragic stays there. They've he can go back to actually playing the point rather yeah. than you know his role. Re- like this season in uh, at Phoenix, has he's been done a bit, lot of standing. Been a bit muddy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's going to be great. And then the other big uh, move from last week was Amari Sadamai being waived and then picked up by the Mavs for essentially nothing. Pretty good. They sort of uh, filled a, a hole in their roster. Yeah, filled a big void for them. And the Knicks also cleared up more money, which is all they've been trying to really do all year. So that, I that's, think everyone's that's gonna, happy. That's going to be an interesting fit with Chandler, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, the re- 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 sorry, reuniting. Yeah, yeah. Hey, where did Carter Williams go? I missed that one. Uh, Michael Carter Williams is now in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee. Okay, yeah. Yeah. under Jason Great Kidd. Great for him. So for me, out of the trade deadline, I think I think the winners um, for me were probably the Suns and OKC. Mm. I, I think that's sort of um, uh, you know, especially with Brandon Knight, that that's an interesting one. Um, and yeah, for me, the Suns and OKC. Uh, OKC managed to get rid of Reggie Jackson, which is a good move for them. Yeah, think, and then uh, they picked up DJ Augustine, who yeah. he he can play the minutes. You know, he yep. him at the one, Russ at the two would be. I think Jackson deadly. wasn't going to resign, so the fact that they could get something for him, regardless yep. of whatever the value ends and up Augustine's being, is good. a much better shooter. I would him. take I would take Augustine over Jackson any day. In a heartbeat, yep. you know, how, when how, he was at Chicago. How much money great. did the Suns pick up just out of interest? Does, does anyone know how much money they pick up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think they would have picked up much. They just would have. Because when you make a trade, the the money has to be roughly even. Otherwise, sure. the league won't allow yeah. it to go through. So the I trade th- machine will reject it. I think from memory, they got some draft picks. Yeah, they got yeah, two, they first round. two first okay, rounds. Yeah. yeah, which is awesome. That's huge, man. Two first round draft picks. That's um, you know, the Suns. Are, you watch out for them next year. Hey, look. Yeah. And what about the sentimentality of of Kevin Garnett able to go back to uh, yeah. Back to the Wolves and also really get a, nice. and, and get a buy-in as well. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's a massive one. That's There's great. been rumors that he's been tr- um, like 
wanting to buy him once he retires, and yep. now that he's there, he yep. could be he could be an owner player. Which Get a collective. I don't think it's together. happened before. Well, well, at least Jordan, in a billion. Jordan, Jordan Jordan was yeah. owner at least player. in a billion mm. to mm. to buy the Wolves. So. Yeah, you got to wonder how much money KG's got because uh, the. the Obviously, he'd prefer to buy in as a majority owner. Yeah, yeah. But with the value of NBA teams at the moment, you've got to wonder if he's got enough coin to do that. Yeah. And, and what do you think Kevin Garnett's position in, in, in the game will forever be seen? Because I think we're, we're, we're winding up Kevin Garnett. Yeah. He'll play the rest of this year and he'll play out next year. I mean, where does Kevin Garnett stand in the greats of the NBA? He's got to be up there. One of the great enforcers, yeah. for sure. I think he's sort of like, if, if I had to put it into like a New Zealand uh, terminology, he would, he would be to me sort of... Oh, there we go. I'm back. He would be like an Eric Rush of uh, yeah. the NBA or something. Maybe a like Zinzam, a Zinzam, sort of Zinzam Brook or yeah. Sean Fitzpatrick. You know, like he's been there, he's done it, and he, he's he's not been absolutely spectacular, but yeah. he is just the man. His his early years, his years in Minnesota and his couple of years in Boston, he was one of the great defenders we've probably ever seen. Uh, yeah. the, his Boston years, and uh, people talk about his years in Minnesota because he was young and yeah. he, and what's up, and he had hunger. But I think. He Boston, was. He man. was. His years in Boston were vital yeah. to the Those Boston. Those were his peak. Yeah. He, he, him along with Paul Pierce yeah. revitalized the Celtics right. franchise yeah, I, I really yeah. think he was the key to those championships was his defense Absolutely. And, and presence yeah. out there hey, not, just, and not just championship but consistency in regards to finals yeah. 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 while we're on NBA and, and talking about revitalization uh, well yeah. <laughs> here we go big moves by the Magic <laughs> let's pick up <laughs> are we, are, why are we talking about the Magic right. been, no, no. <laughs> 12, points, 12 points on the Pelicans yeah, yeah. they're 3 and 2 of their last five with a one point loss to the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are, are these okay. actually your advanced stats? <laughs> yeah. All right. no, no, let, let's, let's, let's go there because they just recently fired their coach. Yep. yep. So they got rid of Vaughn and then the, the, the new guy who I can't pronounce his name has come in. Um, <laughs> yeah. he As you heard earlier, Matt's a massive Magic's fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm just giving a big up to those boys. Um, we'd be four and one under, under new coaching and... Uh, <laughs> If we hadn't lost that game against the Bulls, the uh, streak, the, the, other the streak, the streak begins, and that's that's an eight hundred team, man. I'm yeah. telling you, I, I, I literally just want to turn your microphone off right now. <laughs> they, would be, they would be leading the NBA right now, and I can't talk because ah, I'm there you go. I can't talk because I'm a lifelong Lakers fan. Yeah. Yeah. However, we got banners. At least they so, yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. sixteen banners. The other right, news that came out uh, today was Perkins, who was traded to the yeah. Jazz. Perk um, has now been. Or I don't know if it's official that he's been um, reported brought out, least. but if he has, he's apparently going to the Cavs. Cool. Yep. Uh, apparently, LeBron has recruited for him because um, the they need a big kind of tough, and <laughs> tough guy inside. The youngest GM in the league. Yeah. yeah. Hey, just quickly, is this quite po- was that quite possibly that 24 hours the most exciting trade deadline period in the history of the game? It was the most definitely. It was the most teams history. involved and the most players involved in a trade deadline day. Was it like, exciting for you though, Nate, the white guy? It was. It all happened like. They were sitting there. I think trade deadline was 6 p.m. like um, American, Eastern. whatever American time. Yeah. And it was like three yeah. o'clock. They were like sitting there, like nothing had happened. And then yeah. ten minutes later, it was like ten trades had happened. And I'm yeah. like, holy crap! It was just, it went, it just went nuts. Oh yeah, awesome. All right, so that was the trade line, uh, trade deadline period, and of course, massive moves happening in the NBA. And it's going to be interesting to see how the the remainder of this season goes. But Moving on, American sports still Major League Baseball. The four-year sentence for Anthony Bosch. Yeah, um, oh. was, yeah. I mean, for people who don't know, he was the guy who supplied some of the top-level testosterone uh, dealer to the stars. You put this here. on your shoulders, bro. That's right. And of course, is most most well known to um, customers, Barry Bonds, <laughs> and A Rod, A Rod, who yeah. who I think has done more harm than anything to himself by writing that ridiculous handwritten letter. Yeah, the open letter to to the, the fans. Yankees. Yeah, yeah, because. There is. N- I, I tell you what now, the, the, the word coming in the United States is a rod here. Quite has had. He's done with the Yankees. Yeah, he's yep. done with the way they treated him. Even though he was a fucking drug cheat. Okay, <laughs> he's done with the way they treated him. There is no way that that because because the Yankees wanted to get actually do a press conference yep. rather than have him write this letter. And so him writing the letter, although the senti- the, the sentimentality came across of oh okay I'm I'm sorry to the fans. But firstly, question. Is he sorry for cheating, or is he sorry that he got caught? Yeah, of course. Because that's that, that's sort of how the, I read the letter a little yeah. bit as well. Oh, exactly. He wasn't sorry beforehand, was he? Let's no, that's, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. You know, and so and then Yankees um, management actually wanted to have a press conference, a presser at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, and he refuses. Doesn't want to go back to Yankee Stadium unless it's in, in some other team's colours. Wow. A Rod is a douchebag. If we're, we're all per- sure. like perfectly, he's perfectly honest. He's a douchebag. He, he's. Oh. I won't disagree. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, he's, g- he's provided me with one of my um, my best sporting memories uh, of, of my life. I was, in, uh, I was in Toronto at one stage a few years ago, 
and we were watching a Yankees versus uh, Blue Jays game on a, oh, on yep. a Tuesday night. There's sort of like 40,000 people there. It was like negative three. It was awesome. Damn. Right? So uh, it went into extra innings, and, and the Blue Jays ended up winning. But uh, we were just back off third base there um, in the seats, and the whole crowd, man, just start the whole, hey, Rod. <laughs> hey, Rod. And you could see it, man. It was getting up to him, mate. And, like, every time he came out, the whole crowd was that. Yeah. And then you had the guys in the crowd, you know, oh, steroids, blah, 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 you know, just yeah. giving him giving him full-on Imagine shit. Imagine that, eh? And, um, you know, it's like, hey, well, half the crowd knows, so, um, yeah. you know, why don't we do something about this? And um, it was just awesome, like, seeing so much, um, I'm not a negative person, but so much hate for this guy, <laughs> and him just, like, he just hated it, man. Like, you know, yeah. you sort of see some of the cricketers getting flack from the crowd, and they love it, man. They turn yeah. around and doing yeah. big up. Can this I, guy was I'll depressed. T- I'll tell you who deserves to get their head chopped off, and it's not A-Rod. It's whoever looks after A-Rod's publicity. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. PR guy yeah. needs a fucking yeah. kick up the ass because... This is ridiculous, and you've you've noted, of course, in our in, in our in our sheets. This reminds you of the Ray the Ray Rice situation. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, definitely, um, sort of shades of Ray Rice. How he wrote a letter to his uh, fans and his wife, and um, you know, just this whole letter writing thing, which you know LeBron James was part of, and you know, Amari Stoudemire wrote a poem to New York when yeah. when he <laughs> he was released. So you know, it's, uh, these guys need better marketing for sure, because writing poems and letters that is not cutting edge it's in just any way. Further, like. Um, I, I find baseball and the NRL very similar in that there just always seems to be something. There's always a big news thing yeah. to do with drugs. It's like or how dirty is the sport yeah. actually, you know? And, and A-Rod is like probably the biggest star of the last decade or two even in baseball. And it's just yeah. like, to see your biggest star, one of the most successful players ever. His see, I was, always a, I'm, I was always more of a Jeter fan um, yeah. out of New York. Though. Yeah. I like Jeter. His, his I like numbers are yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. And he's sass Mariah Carey. Yeah, that <laughs> nice. is my man. And it's just like it's just another huge, huge thing for the for the baseball to have to deal with. Like another big name, obviously a prison sentence. I think is great because uh, for for the dealer, uh, what was his name? Um, Anthony Bosch. Uh, like it's a good thing that he's getting prison time because you got to put your foot down and say we can't have this happen. Make an example. And like, four mm. years is is decent. I think like four years I in would a federal penitentiary. Actually, like to see players get prison time for it. Well, I don't know I how the dealer can and, and the player can't really, like, it's, well, I don't know, it's weird. Because in the eyes of the law, supply is always, supply yeah. is always... The, is worse the, than demand. Is worse than right. demand. <laughs> yeah. And it's always a supplier that gets, because if yeah. you cut off the supply, then there's the usage drops down in regards yeah. to any sort of drug, whether it be um, Class A or PEDs or anything like that. But the four-year sentence here, I mean, in a federal penitentiary, is that too much? That's hard time. That is, that's like, yeah. that's pretty, like... He's in there with, 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 with murderers. Is this and white collar crime or blue collar? Yeah, I was, I was wondering that. Like, is he going to be in there? You know, with all well, those. I those suppose it's su- supply, like possession with intent to supply a controlled substance. So it's drug dealing. No, in, really. no intent. Well, if he, if, he got uh, caught, yeah. if he got caught on the street, man, he would be in. He would be it's in. Just, the it's big just boys, drug though, dealing, you know? I guess. Eh, so. it, it's a, it's a statement. I think that it's four years. It's same as. Um, Send them to jail. Banning Donald Sterling for life. It's like, send, send them all to jail. <laughs> if you like the shit, all they're going to do it. is pull on this big depression card that all these sports players do when shit, hap- shit like this happens. Or t- then they play the, they oh, you know, I'm going through some really hard He's times. Motherfucker, you're rich. Yeah. You're rich. you got a hot wife. you probably got a hot girlfriend too. You do drugs because you want to do drugs. Like, you do, it's a gateway to happiness. Or just have a steroid league. Yeah, for everything. Have a steroid NBA. Yeah. Have a steroid have the baseball. Roid Limpet. Let them do whatever they want. <laughs> I'm just a have fan. Guys hit send send them to prison and then let them do something like the longest yard and make make a movie. And then they'll make yeah. more money. Just make steroid porn, okay? Wow. Oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> so, that, well, I think that's a category. So the, it could, could be. Could you, could you imagine Usain Bolt on, on the juice man? You wow. know, like what, you not, are you trying to say not, he's not? No, no, no I'm not, <laughs> uh, not particularly important. Hey, hey, out of competition. All black guys are fast. Out of competition. It's all that rum in Jamaica, bro. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. not fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm not black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit lighter. So the question that's been brought up by uh, by JB is, does the sentence of Anthony Bosch to four years foreshadow harsher penalties for all PED dealers? JB? <laughs> What's <laughs> your question, <laughs> <laughs> you dealer? <laughs> J- JB, well, you know <laughs> it, it would be good because um, you know obviously uh, mixed martial arts UFC is a big talking point at the moment. Is them advocating for harsher penalties? So if they could, if you could have harsher penalties for the athlete as well as the supplier, um, yeah, definitely. Then you know I think that's only fair because. You know, uh, without the demand, there, there wouldn't be a need for supply. Aren't they looking at a nine-month <laughs> ban um, if you get found guilty? 
for PEDs. For PEDs. Uh, it's already and, uh, uh, six to nine, well, six months plus, so... We're talking in regards to UFC, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, not harsh, it's not harsh enough. No, it yeah. should be two well, years minimum or, you know, and the UFC advocating really means nothing because they, the, they are the whole show. So if they want to ban people for four years from fighting for the UFC... It hurts their pocket. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. And I think, I think the word you use there, advocating it, is dead right because you look at, like, yeah. uh, what was the name? Obstupchuk. Oh, yes. Obstupchuk, the one... Yeah, That dude. Wonderful pronunciation. He actually won... Way better than mine. Against... What's her name? Valerie Adams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But then it was overturned. Yeah, so and let's be honest. I think she was a man anyway. Well, it definitely looks like a few men. Yeah, <laughs> or she's yeah had a few, eaten a few. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he's out of the comp now anyway. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was like the Chinese uh, swim team. Remember that when they were all oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like these Chinamen like huge, <laughs> look like like huge traps. It looked dude. like the Chinese muscle men team. <laughs> 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 Probably had big dicks too. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you driving me crazy? It's the bourbon. All right, sorry. So that, that was what was going on in Major League Baseball. America's Cup. All right. Now, this is going to have a big impact on a lot of New Zealanders and what we think and on how our, our government should be Definitely. spending our money and all that sort of thing. Um, well, let's, let's firstly touch on the point of whether or not, firstly, the government should be providing funding to Team New Zealand. We spoke about it a little bit last week. Yep. Um, Matt, the stat. Yo, I'm your a, view. Your I'm view. A, I mean, you're you're a very opinionated person. Yeah, I can be from time to time. Um, every, every <laughs> only when you're talking all, yeah. all the time. Yeah, just no, no one is asleep. Yeah, <laughs> he's in the sleep. He's like, no, 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 drop interest rates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, okay. Let's. Um, I'm a fan of it. Let's let's yeah. provide some funding um, because I like even even when the America's Cup isn't here as mm. such it's still the vibe that it creates there's Definitely. a good talking point yep. um, you know and ultimately the country ends up making money out of it yeah from a business so point of view you know we make more from the income tax to do with the industry as a country than we put into it so and, and let's yeah, be yeah. honest the only people having a fucking cry about this are tending to be these left wing <laughs> fucking don't <laughs> want anything else other than me spent on welfare and don't get me wrong, I, I believe there's got to be a balance in this world when it comes to how we spend our money, how we look after our people. Yeah. But the people crying not necessarily aren't the centre left. They're not the people who are actually needing some of the help. It's the far left, legalise marijuana, legalise this and that, let us do what we want to do with this and that, stop oil fracking, stop doing all of this. It's them that are having the bitch and the cry about the government spending the money on the America's Cup. You won't find too many people, I think, who voted for National in the last election complaining about how they spend their money when regards to putting it into the America's Cup challenge. I guess I guess for, for people that don't really follow uh, America's Cup, it's because we don't really know what where their money is and when they, where their money comes back. Mm-hmm. Like last week, for example, I, I had no idea that we it's, actually made... But that's, it, to me, that, so that's, that's more that's ignorance because it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been greatly publicized through almost every sort of media service about uh, so you tend to, so what you'll tend to find is you'll tend to find right wing left wing um, journalists and that sort of thing but most of the left wing journalists have been unable to be able have been unable to um, deny the fact of the money that's being brought back into the marine industry you know whether it be through boat builders or sail makers or not just them and this is not just about the viaduct having bars open yeah, yeah. and having money coming yeah. into bars and tourism things yep. this is about the money that it brings in. I mean, you, you look at these super yachts you go on a fishing charter out of West Haven Marina yep. and you have a look at all these super yachts you drive past they are built here in New Zealand yep. for Italian millionaires they are built here in New Zealand for Greek millionaires yep. Yep. we lead the way for sure and the innovation of sailing the innovation I mean we talk about the innovation of Oracle in the last America's Cup yep. that came out of Walkworth that's right yeah, exactly so why can't we win because we we don't have that technology, and I don't think what the technology we cash. make, but it's not the technology we, 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 we use. So the way oh, that the yeah, America's yeah. Cup is, is is basically said, whoever holds the America's Cup Makes creates the rules. the rules of competition. Yeah. Oh, so wow. if you can win the America's Cup, yeah. you create the rules of competition. So it's pretty contrived. That's and right. Then, and then from th- <laughs> there on, from there on in, uh, it's it's become somewhat like Formula One. It's so you a, can pretty much rig it. So you can win. Pretty much. Yeah. It is a pissing contest. It's just money, and it's turned into. And we lost the second time. It's turned into checkbook racing basically. and only billionaires exactly. can beat billionaires mm. now and we're t- a billionaire or two short and the, well we're probably not yeah. four billionaires too <laughs> short to be honest <laughs> team new zealand are reliant on the government funding firstly and they were reliant yeah. they were initially after the last um regatta they were re- originally reliant on i think two or three million dollars just to keep the operation um 
uh, moving just to keep the product alive and uh, keep the to keep the people employed that they needed to keep employed before they got picked up by yeah. other by other racing syndicates exactly so now um, John Key has basically said any funding will likely be less and you got to look at these two quotes one firstly from John Key and look at the way it's written yeah any funding will likely be less than 2013 yeah. key word in there is likely the second one is from Stephen Joyce okay which basically said wait and see and that any host, uh, hosting any significant part of the cup is worth it okay now the first two things wait and see and likely you see I just don't like how they have to tiptoe around that yeah it's, exactly you know but like they, uh, yeah I okay, get it's politics, political motivations that's the world, obviously PC, you know like they should just be able to throw it out there for me it's a it's a it's a, it's simple mathematics like okay we invest this we're going to get money out of it the country's going <coughs> to win secondly if we win and we bring we bring that America's Cup back here, man, that's big news for New Zealand. That's huge, yeah. and uh, that's the end of it for me. Like, let's and it's, go. It's not even about bringing the America's Cup back. I personally, and I followed the America's Cup since I was seven years old. Okay, yeah. I, Red Sox. It, probably even no, even younger. I'm talking about KZ one, KZ seven. Oh uh, yeah, Chris so, Dixon. Yeah, that's right. So I'm I'm, I'm thinking of way back when when we, we when we basically led the charge when it came to. Um, um, uh, fiberglass uh, yeah. yacht development and that sort yeah. of thing so I don't think that we have the money and I don't think we have the resources to be able to do what needs to be done to win the America's Cup yeah, why don't we just sell that boat that's down on the viaduct uh, isn't that the, the loser's boat that we put in up which which boat the the one that's down on the viaduct oh that Up sits outside waterfront by the yeah, 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 yeah. that's, oh, yeah. that's, K, that's KZ1 yeah so is that the one we won with no 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 we lost, lost? We, we lost with that but that was our I think it was the first is that, no it's not 7 it's 1 no 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 he's talking about KZ1 it sits in the, it sits in the middle there so, so that was I'm pretty sure KZ1 was our first challenge boat yeah um, no no sorry I'm incorrect with that sorry KZ1 was um Oh, KZ1, I think, was the catamaran, sorry. KZ7 was the, the losing Chris Dixon boat anyway. However, looking at the money thing, it's not just about the money that it brings in with America's Cup being here. I mean, the fact that we're having one of the Challenger Series here in Auckland, and you're going to have these teams based there for three or four months, yep. you've got that as well, which basically offsets the um, the reliance on the money from required in regards yep. to hospitality and tourism. But then also, it's the money that the industry makes out of this, you know? Yeah, those syndicates are going to be spending all of their money here, you know, all of the resources they need, they'll be getting locally. And you remember all those super yachts that were out there when the America's Cup was here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Th- these are millionaires that are looking for new yachts, and yeah. they, they want playground, they want play toys. Yeah, that's you right. Know? You look like you got something to say, Nate. Oh, all I was going to say is that um, with the the quote of hosting any significant of the part is worth it. Are they? What I kind of read from that is, if they're not hosting it, do they Left mean it's student. not worth it? So, like, if if we don't yeah. host any part so of the challenge, that's cup, right. Are they going to not put money. So in? the that's funding was re- the funding was reliant on New Zealand getting the right. So, so, so to host the challenge, to ha- host the challenge yeah. series. Yeah, that's right. And funny enough, um, Sydney actually pulled their that's bid right. out so, yeah. last so minute. The New Zealand government doesn't want to fund the actual team; they want to just fund the event. No, because what they see is they they also want to get all these millionaires down here. They want them spending money yeah. buying these new yachts and and, and and all that sort of stuff. So they want the regatta series here. They realize what not not what. It only can do for the boat building industry, but for tourism. Industry, so yeah. the, the Challenger series will be broadcast on NBC Television in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to get that publicity of the TV Auckland money. Harbour and things like that. So they basically they basically said that the money was going to be reliant on Auckland and getting thing, one yeah. of the Challenger series events. So they won't put anything in if it's not here. They won't pay it's, for TV. Yeah, but it's already been decided. That's what yeah. they're saying. Ah, okay, cool. So yeah. it's already been declared Auckland are going to host one of the Challenger series events here, yeah. and the government have now committed the money. Um, they're not too sure what how what much amount, money it'll be. Yeah. It'll probably be somewhere in the vicinity, I'd say, of twenty-five to thirty million dollars. Yeah. And then Last Sunny Bill will come out and save the day. Yep, we need Sonny Bull on that boat. That's the yep. truth. Well, we don't have Dean Barker anymore. <laughs> or, or, or Richie McCaw. Well, the Dean Barker one is an interesting argument because I think Dean Barker's probably had his time at the helm. I think he's been yeah. like the skipper of Team New Zealand now for what, 13 years. How many years? times do you reinforce Longer. failure? You know, there, there's a simple, there's a simple, um, a simple answer for that argument. Uh, Petty Wepu. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't keep, he have like a calm. hole in his heart? Yeah. At the helm, it's been yeah. fixed, mate. Be right. oh, is, is he back to playing? Yeah, man, he plays yeah, overseas. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So he's all good. But Dean, the Dean Barker thing, he's been at the helm of Team New Zealand since 2000. Yeah. He's had 15 years in charge of Syndicate. We've had now three failed attempts yeah. Yeah. either to yeah. hold the America's Cup or win the America's Cup back. Yeah. Surely there comes a time where you have to step down. And it sounds like Grant Dalton and the board of Team New Zealand, um, Stephen Tyndall and the likes, 
have decided, um, and I think the writing was on the wall back in Jan, uh, sorry, back in November when he was appointed as the director of sailing. Yes, I yeah. think so. And I think that was sort of a sign that the writing was yeah. on the wall. Yeah, um, yeah, giving him a bit of a glad hand. I'm, I'm and of course, Peter Burling, um, silver medalist from the last Olympic Games, yep. who's sort of seen as being the next, the next man to take the helm. Very young, 24 years of age, though. Yeah. The one, the one implication though for him though is him and um, um, uh, sorry, I forget the other guy's name, Chuk. They've been undefeated since the Olympic Games and every single regatta that they've competed in. Yeah. So that, that brings me to my thoughts on that. And and what hap- what, what just what happens with with their ambitions to win gold in, in Rio, and the mm. at the Olympic Games? So how does yeah, that true. affect what okay. happens with the Olympic? Because do you think it's mutually exclusive? What do you mean? Their relationship? Could, I don't know. Like, could, could they, they do they both? both? <laughs> They're like, yeah. Could they not do both? They can't do both. No, they can't. So, can't. so okay. Pete Montgomery came on. He came. Uh, he was interviewed earlier in the week, and yep. basically what he said was. It's hard to know what they don't know. And right. basically what they're right. insinuating there is that sailing on a, on a big boat like this is a lot different than sailing around in a... Um, of course, yeah. A, and, and a, um, and I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not too sure exactly what class of boat that they sail on. Oh, like yeah, tiny yeah. little cats. You know, and yeah. that sort of thing. So there's a huge difference to knowing how to control the boat, how to navigate yeah. on that boat. Because I would imagine, because they're both going to be in there, one will be the helmsman, the other one will be the, yeah. the navigator. And also controlling a team yeah. as well. But in saying that, though, a lot of this... Um, talk about Dean Barker being moved on has actually been apparently driven from within the team anyway oh that, wow. that, that it's time to sort of uh, okay. move on and, and go something well, new soon surely the leadership is one of the hardest things that these guys are going to have to adapt well don't you yeah. in a failed organisation don't you you cut the yeah. head off yeah, first yeah, that's right. and then the effect trickles down yep. now does that mean that Grant Dalton has to go but in saying that though, here's the thing you have to think about Grant Dalton is the reason they have funding Absolutely. Yes, yes. he's yeah, the reason yeah. that he goes to Dubai he's he, the one he owns his position yep. pretty much you know because no one else wants to put in the time to get the to get the, right. the syndicate he up is and the running face of, of you know what they need to start doing is smuggling drugs the see that guy riding on a boat then you're like hey the new helmsman for the wrong NRL star NRL star hey last topic Cricket World Cup it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been awesome and yeah. great. Uh, just for me, the highlight of this weekend was not the New Zealand win over England on Friday and oh. the way that they did it, but it was the Australian Bangladesh game getting washed out last night and they have yeah. to share the points. <laughs> oh wow! How about th- how about that net run rate though? Eh? Yeah, it's, pre- it's, yeah. Pre- it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty, pretty awesome. I was, I was explaining to Etsy the other night how it worked out and and why they was why them going for it made such a big difference sure, to, yeah, yeah. to yeah, their, yeah. Their, their net run rate and where they stand in the in the competition. Yeah, I'll tell you I'll tell you what 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 a highlight for me has been is seeing some of these minnows like uh, you know and perform come come along and and, and perform f- for some. What like uh, I was just watching the Afghanistan and uh, Sri Lanka over there. Yeah, it looks like Afghanistan's actually having a decent hit out against them. That's good, man. Um, you know whether or not they got cleaned up at the other end, but yeah. uh, who knows? But you know it's cool seeing um, uh, them coming out posting two eighties and putting a bit of pressure on. Even the Scotland uh, New Zealand game the other yeah, day, yeah, yeah, it was good right. to see everyone no, starts um, moaning um, about it. And I, I thought it was good to watch. So everyone's freaking out about that game, but, yeah. you know. And here's the thing they got to realize that you have a look at the way they all got out. They got out like. Kane Williamson, always yeah. got, they got up trying to play shots and to get the to get the run rate moving that's and right. that's They got themselves out. They yeah, got themselves happened. out. Yeah. You know, playing overly did, aggressive. That's right. And it was it was all about net run rate. They yeah. knew they were going to beat Scotland. That was never in doubt. That's right. Beating Scotland was never Scotland in doubt. Scotland are not a world class threat to them. You know, it's not like it was going to be a close game. They had to protect their wickets, etc. And I think they proved that against the English team. They came out and said, right, uh, we got to make a point here. Let's clean them. these guys up. How about that, Southie? Uh, awesome, mate. That's you know who who takes away man and match there. McCullum Salvi, I don't know. Salvi, Salvi. It's gotta be. Yeah. It's gotta be. It's, it's got a, it's like a huge a bowling performance. Because Salvi's allowed the position for McCullum to go after it. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's Without right. Salvi, you know, Salvi built that that game really. So amazing. Yep. So big things I reckon coming up in cricket World Cup. And I I think I I think, and I'm almost tempted at the moment to buy tickets to the World Cup final. It's still available. Yeah, yep. I, I had a look. Yep. I had a look before on um, yesterday. How much are they going for? Oh, three hundred dollars dollars a ticket. How, yeah, about, how about the cheap. semi? How about the semi at Eden Park? Is that still got available? No, sold out. Sold out. Wow. Okay, sold out. But the World Cup, the, the World Cup final, still got tickets. Can available. sort you out a semi at Eden Park, though. I think. <laughs> I bet you could. <laughs> I think you could sort us out a semi, not at Eden Park. <laughs> we've got, we've got Nate the White guy here. He's got so. the contacts, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I found myself lucky enough to go along to the uh, Australian Black Caps game next uh, next week. I, nice. I managed to stumble along some tickets, um, nice. which is pretty cool. I love the live sporting events. It was so nice for you to invite us, too. I got one. I would have thought you wanted to invite Nate, fellow I white guy. Hey, you just got back from the States, didn't you, Matt? I did. Uh, what what Europe, games yeah. did you check out over there? So I got along to, um, I was in Oakland, and I checked out a Opening weekend, Oakland. Of, yeah, Oakland. Uh, opening weekend NBA. So it was um, nice. Golden State, 
Golden State versus Lakers. Are you a Splash Brothers it, fan? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I'm like, you know, I, I don't like. I'm not personally, yeah, but yeah. you can't not be, man. Yeah. They're, they're so personable and Hype they're just so talented. Yeah. Is it you just know? me, or does it seem like that basketball fans in general aren't completely all in on Golden State? Like, yeah, you know. Personally, I, I am not anywhere near in on Golden State. I'm not not a fan of Golden State or the Splash Brothers. But I'm talking in regards to sort of how they played in the season. Do, do it. People are like waiting for the bubble to burst. Well, you think you have a look at the way the Thunder are playing in particular at the yeah. moment, and even though they're sitting in what the eighth spot yep. in, in, in the Got West, some nice new pieces though. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Those like sort of six. Either division, either conference, six yep. out of the eight teams could beat each other. Well, in, in the you West, know. you know, the top 10 to 12 teams could, could possibly do it. Oh, absolutely, you know, and that's 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 awesome. So, um, I don't know, we're like, what, 55 games deep now? Yeah. Um, you know, Golden State are 42 and 8 after yesterday. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's huge, man. Like, I don't know if there's going to be any bubble bursting anytime soon. I'm now, like, a, they're my backup team because I went to one of the games and they gave me a T-shirt. <laughs> nice. That's the Warriors. Well, yeah. So, well, when I say they gave me a T-shirt, I mean, we paid 140 US seat. for some shitty seats. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was on the seat, so... Um, but it was awesome, man. But like, do you think they've got crowd. what it takes to go deep? Like, could you see them in the finals? Yeah, like, absolutely. The concern, could, yep. like, in, in the Western Conference finals. So. Wow. The concern with the Warriors, and it's concern, the concern with the Thunder as well. The last few years is, yeah, they went on jump shooting, which yeah, yeah. Yeah. anytime you can get cold, could go down. Yeah, like the teams that have good big men, like the Hawks and the Spurs. Yeah. That's why the Spurs are always so consistent, because yeah. when they get to the playoffs. They've got big men that can score. Yeah. But you know what? There seems to be a change to the way that Russell Westbrook in particular is playing for the Thunder at the moment. Yeah. I mean, you look at... I mean, yeah, he's always been very athletic, but the he's way that he's driving... He's driving, he's like driving at the moment. He's, he's, driving, he's, he's driving like Schumacher. Yeah, he's not going skiing, down like, Not skiing like Schumacher. No, let's hope not. Oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> it's, wow. It's never too soon. He's, I'm not all in on them. I stand by what I said six weeks ago. Yeah. Thunder for the Thunder to win the West. Yeah. Uh, Thunder to win the West. Bulls to win the East. Yeah. I'm still standing by Thun- my Mavs Bulls. Mavs Thunder Bulls to win the NBA. I don't. I don't see the Hawks making it. Um. No, yeah. Not if they play the way they did yesterday. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. That too. Um. Uh, yeah. I just don't see the Hawks pulling through for some reason. It's. It's not me. And you're Is right. It star power. Do you think? Uh. Yeah. Mm. I. I just something about that team. I, I. Admittedly, I haven't watched that much of them. Yeah. But something about it just doesn't say to me that they're a championship the team. Big thing with playoffs is when you get that the, those last five minutes and you have a Kobe or a LeBron or a Wade oh, take absolutely. over. Yeah. yeah. And the Hawks, you go. Don't not ever gonna take over. Yeah, like, Teague's don't ever gonna... use. Co- don't ever use LeBron oh, and man. Wade it's as so posers. Defensive. Okay. Let it go. <laughs> and the <laughs> same level as Kobe. Oh go. my God. Did you say Kobe? Yeah. Did you go? Oh, what one? Like my ears Did you start. Kobe to anyone? With Actually, I've, I've got a really cool video on my phone of that game that we attended in Oakland, and oh, um, yeah. Kobe gets fouled, goes to the um, goes to the goes to the foul line, eh? And he, he just bricks this um, bricks this uh, <laughs> free throw, right? Steph Curry grabs a rebound, right? Comes in, crashes the boards, boom, crosses over, ankle breaks whoever down the other end, hits this three. And the crowd just like they say that the Golden State crowd is one of the best in the NBA, yeah. and yeah. it's got to be man. I haven't been to any other NBA it's games, hostile. but it went nuts, especially because yeah. Kobe bricked the um, free yeah. throw. Yeah, yeah. But in saying that, all respect is that the to Kobe, same? Is that the same Kobe, Kobe tore his Achilles tendon and came in and shot two free throws? So defensive. I'm just checking. Oh. I'm just checking. Oh. I'm just checking. Oh. I was just paying. I was just How many signing off. Back oh, no, I'm just, I'm just I was off saying off. Kobe Bryant. Okay, Bryant. I was just checking. <laughs> What's I was the record? Uh, yeah, 16, yeah. 16 titles is their record. Yeah. Kobe <laughs> Bryant, five they rings. 16 titles. Yeah. Kobe Bryant, five rings. Just checking. A game's yeah. not a title. That's right. Yeah, Might have 16 wins. That's okay. <laughs> Dirk will end with no more rings. Uh, <laughs> Dirk, Dirk will finish up with no more rings. rings. Uh, I, I, uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to get a ring this year. Who? Dirk? Yeah. Nah, I can't. As much as I enjoy the way the Mavs are playing this year, like they're, they're playing some really, really yeah. good, good ball, and they've sort of incorporated almost that pop. That pop feel of play, mm, yeah. Um, I, I still can't see them. The, the kind, I think they're eleven and nine since they got Rondo. Like yeah. Rondo hasn't quite done what he. Uh, he hasn't yeah. been completely healthy, obviously yet either. But yeah, Rondo was, was, Rondo was, Rondo was never healthy. a good. He was never a good match for their system. Mm. I'm we'll sorry. We'll see yeah. how it goes. What's because the, the, the idea was nice. Yeah, I wanted to see Rondo in Cleveland last year. This time last year, mm. that would have been amazing. Yeah. How how the, how does that work though? Well, well I would, I would, I would, how does this time last year I would have traded you Kyrie and Waiters for Rondo? Really? Yeah, yeah for oh, sure. Oh, that's a big deal. Oh. This time I'd last year, you'd be cra- you'd be trading Kevin Love pretty quickly now, wouldn't you? Uh, as a I don't give a shit what happens to Kevin Love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, man, that guy can't even float or anything. He can't stand outside and be he a knockdown. He, he can't be jack. Like a sitting dunk the other day. He, he, yeah. he needs to be on the right team. Eh? Yet oh, again, yeah. wrong team. Wrong Good, system, nice idea. Yeah. Nice idea. Wrong system. Love should have gone to the Lakers. Switch him into the Rockets. And that's not that's no no that's don't laugh. That's not even a Laker fan talking. 
yeah. Yeah. yeah, to be fair, he would fit perfectly. He yeah. would have fit in really, really well, and he would have filled the spot Man, with those, those bright that, lights yeah. would be yeah, good okay. for him, I think. Oh, you, you're talking about it. You're, talk, you're, you're talking about the most financial franchise yeah. in, the, in the NBA. Star mm. power. Star power. To be yeah. fair, I also more think Love would have done well in the Timberwolves, so, like with Rubio. Mm, so sure. Like, yeah. well, he, he wasn't doing well, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they weren't winning. Most, most. Uh, oh, I don't want to get into it anymore, yeah. anybody. It's a sporting lockdown. We're down at the tap room, seventy-four Wyndham Street. Thanks for listening, in. Matt G. Good to have you along. You want to join us again for another chat? Oh yeah, man. I'll be down, um, no doubt. So, uh, do you follow UFC? Uh, you know, not really. Um, <laughs> like, oh, you know, no, I you don't. Like, you are you almost know, the perfect man. Almost, Looks like I do. I do somewhat when Wait, when it's like. I'm one of those sort of like bandwagon, like sure, sure. Uh, Mark Hunt's fighting. I've, I've been to yeah. UFC. Yeah, yeah. Which I, one? I went to uh, one one six nine in, in Toronto, and that was GSP versus that American dude. Uh, Condit. Oh, I can't Wait, remember. One six nine. Uh, no, Diaz. One six five. Uh, Diaz. I, I can't remember. It was the big one in Toronto, in the. Um, it was either Diaz or Hendrix? I guess. It was, it was GSP one, and it was it was sick because GSP won, and he was a bit of a local um, hometown guy there. Yeah. A little bit of a favourite. Um, so yeah, yeah. That, that was cool, man. Um, <laughs> I think they they know of him up up there. Yeah, they, the they've border. heard of him once or twice. And um, tickets were expensive, man. But I managed a friend of mine had some over there, and um, that was cool because we actually went to that that, that baseball game, the uh, Blue Jays versus Yankees. Uh, two sure. nights later was the yeah. UFC. So awesome. um, yeah, like I think I'm going to get into it a little bit more. Um, but it's same thing with like sort of Pac-Man and money. Like, oh, it's in the news, yeah, so I'm yeah. a fan, you yeah. know. Um, okay. oh, you know, so Quite similar know. to me. We're like, oh, if it's on, I'll watch it, and I really enjoy yeah. watching. It. I just don't follow it hugely. Yeah. Um, I've been but watching a bit of a Bellator. Yeah, yeah, Bellator. Yeah. Good. Well, because of the access to it on Sky. Yeah, and, stuff yeah, yeah, right. Right. and yeah. I think it seems a little bit like more entertaining than UFC for me. Bellator um, used to have a really great tournament system. Um, which was awesome. I think because... And I let's bear in mind, Bellator are a company now that have invested in professional wrestling as well. Dude, oh, Viacom. Right, okay. They got their Viacom money. So, yep. so I don't... Sorry, um, I don't I don't follow the star power of UFC big yeah, yeah. time. So, I'm just looking at it purely for the fights. And I just yeah. think... The Bellator that's, fights That's the best me, way to like, look at MMA. They're a little bit more... They're a little bit more brutal. Like, not that UFC really needed to be it's more lower, brutal, it's, it's lower quality fighters. That's why. And yeah. you always tend to, tends to be a little bit more... Dude, if you've ever been to, like, scrappy. regional MMA, like local New Zealand MMA, yeah. good MMA and bad MMA may happen at every single level there is. It's yeah, a sporting yeah. it's a sporting lockdown Sunday. Thanks for joining us there, Matt. What's yeah, up? No Nate the white guy McLovin. You are now Nate the White Guy McLovin. <laughs> <laughs> JB, Itty Nazari, I'm Dan McLeod. We're going to be back with Spawn and Ball in a little bit. We're going to be uh, pr- uh, reviewing Henderson versus Thatch as well as talking about tomorrow's big one out of Brazil, Bigfoot versus Frank Mir. And we've also got the last style bender, yeah, yeah. Israel Adesanya, here with us today and um, coming off his big victory over in Australia. So stay right there. We're going to play a little bit of music and we'll be back in just a little bit. And for those of you, remember, you want to check out the Ultimate Rider, www.ultimaterider.co.nz. For all of our downloads and everything that you need to do to listen and let's, learn. Let's, uh, let's, let's go run, breakers, uh, man. run iTunes, <laughs> Stitcher, go we're on uh, Player FM. We're all over the place now. Wicked. Go Breakers. Yeah, just one more one more time. Sorry, yeah, sorry, break, sorry, sorry, yep, sorry. Breakers are Breakers, tonight. everybody. Semi-final. Yep, let's go. 6,000 as, as, like, as much as I dislike watching Breakers basketball, should we go watch, what, should we go watch it tonight if there's tickets no, available? Like 4 o'clock. Hey, guess what? I got courtside. Boom. This, this is why no one likes you. You're such you know? a pimp. There we go. That's it. Sporting lockdown. Awesome like to have it. you all along here. Um, thanks, Matt, again. Pleasure. Thank you, guys. I, I love hanging out with you guys. It's just, it's like family. And talking shit. Yeah. There you all go. right, we'll be back with Sporting <laughs> Ball in a little bit. This is Jay-Z right here on the Sportsman Network. Word.